the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 28. Ezekiel, chapter 28. I want to begin at verse 12. Reads as follows. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carcable, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and thy pipes was prepared in thee, the, uh, in, in, in thee the day that thou was created. Thou art Mishmah. Now that's Hebrew. And this, and this right here, when it's talking about the anointing, it says the anointed cherub that covereth. Mimshak is the word here. Now Mimshak is only used one time. This is the lone biblical reference of the word memshak. It says anointed. Here is the transliteration. I want you to know that this word means properly. It is an expanded, an expansion as a great wingspan. Mm. A great wingspan. Mm -hmm. Y'all, you are the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till, till, till iniquity was found in thee. Somebody say something happened. Mm -hmm. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, mm -hmm. O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up, self-exalted, because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. You may have your seats. I want to continue in the message that we started last week. And the message entitlement was everything is not about you. Everything is not about you. And, and we come here and we see this scripture where God is dealing with an individual and he sees something in this individual that reminds him of somebody. In this passage here, Tyrus is the similitude, if you will, and the extension of Satan. He is unrighteousness incarnate. So he looks at Tyrus here, who's a person who we've actually dealt with before. But in Tyrus, he sees something that he's seen before. When God looks at you and I, what is it that he sees? Does he see a reflection of himself or does he see a reflection of the enemy? He sees so much of the enemy in Tiberius that he starts addressing him as if he is Satan. This is a very difficult text for a lot of scholars to talk about because he goes in and out of talking to Tyrus and talking to Satan at the same time because it's like, I've seen you before. See, Tyrus hadn't been in Eden, but Satan had. Tyrus hadn't been to the mountain of God, but Satan had. And so he has seen characteristics like this before. And so I want to submit something to you. I want you to listen here. It is in parallel fashion 
that we see this is the same thing that transpires in Peter's insurrection. He talks to Peter, to Peter, the physicality. But he talks to the spirit that's inside of Peter because Satan did get behind him, but Peter moved. I said, Satan got behind him, but Peter moved. Because when he talked to Peter, he said, Satan, did he say Peter's name? He said, Satan, get behind me. Why? Was Peter Satan? No. But who was operating in Peter at the time that he told him to move? The enemy. So oftentimes what God can do is look at you and even though you've been serving, oh my God, even though you've been serving him for a mighty long time, sometimes he doesn't see himself. He sees you. He doesn't see himself, he sees you. Mm. Verse 15 he says, iniquity was found in thee. I like to add an ED to that. It was not only just found in thee, it was founded in thee. It was founded in thee. Something happened. Something happened. Something happened before Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, old Slewfoot, that old serpent, something happened to Lucifer before sin was found in him. Because something always happens before you sin. Something always happens because Adam was perfectly fine, wasn't he? Adam was perfectly made, wasn't he? I like to call it, even though they have all these nice big words to describe all these times in the theological seminaries, I like to call the dispensation before the fall of man very good. I like to call it the very good dispensation because when God made the world, he looked at it and he said, everything was very good. So when he made, every, when he made all things on earth, y'all hear me? No, y'all hear me? When he made everything on earth, everything on, <laughs> everything on earth, I didn't say what was happening in the heavenlies. I said everything that he made, I'm, man, come on now, y'all. I said that everything he made on earth was very good, not in the heavenlies, because there was some corruption. I know, I know some people are going to mess with me about this, but I'm going to get to you in a minute. Pride came before destruction. So before, so so while, so while, so while, so so while Satan is is, is sitting Lucifer as a matter of fact because he hadn't become Satan yet. Right. So while right. Satan was uh, while Lucifer, I'm getting the mess up, but y'all get the me. Lucifer was doing stuff. Lucifer was bringing was ushering in the presence of the Lord. Lucifer had per. I said Lucifer had purpose. Now y'all don't understand me. Yes, sir. I said he was in the presence of God and he has purpose. But before he could fall, something had to happen. Something had to happen. Pride stepped into Lucifer. Oh my God. I said, I said Lucifer was fine before pride got a hold of him. Lucifer was doing what he was supposed to do because he said, God said the word y'all just saw. He said, I set thee so. I put you in this station. I put you in this position. Don't think because God has put you in a position that you can't get beside yourself. Tell me something I've been called. Tell me something God called me, yeah? God can call you and you still get beside yourself. Verse 17 says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. You know, he started looking in that mirror a little bit too hard. Some of us was doing that this morning because we had to be right for Valentine's Day, didn't we? Okay, some of y'all was like, I don't even mess with Valentine's Day. Some of y'all had a little good look, look right to come to church. 
Because you ain't want to see nobody see you raggedy. Right? right? You had to get yourself dressed up. Ain't nothing wrong with looking good. Ain't nothing wrong with looking good, but some of us take a little bit. You know, they tell you not to, you know, it's kind of like a whole wise tale, but this guy's truth to it. You know, you don't put a baby in front of the mirror too much. There's a reason for that, because the baby like, hold on, that's me. <laughs> your baby used to cute, your baby used to cool before you put him in front of that, mi that mirror. Now he just, uh, yeah. <laughs> used to be like, oh, God, God, goo goo, then they saw that, that in the mirror. Hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Wait till I learn how to walk. But what will happen is, we'll get caught up in our, mm. we'll get caught up in ourselves. Yeah, mm, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to this in a minute. I want to submit to you something that I haven't ever heard before. Maybe you've heard it, but I've never heard it, preached, taught, or otherwise. I want to submit to you something that dawned upon me as I begin my study here. I want to submit to you that angels are free will beings. Uh, see, angel, we think that angels just run around heaven brain dead. Holy, 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 holy. No, they choose to say he's holy. They choose to say that he's holy. How else can you uh, rectify, if you will, how else can you think that, 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 the decision of unrighteousness was made manifest without free will. If they did not have free will, then they could. If they didn't have free will, then they could not commit sin. Because we act like Lucifer was the only one. Ain't that how I start off? They don't care about the body. They only care about the head. That works every way that you can think about it. They don't care about the body. They only care about the head because if you kill the head, then the body will what? The body will fall. Amen? You switch. If you, kill, if you kill the head, then the body will fall. Amen. So we look here and these angels got this free will, so that's how unrighteousness is made manifest. I want to give you another for instance here. Paul writes to the church of Galatia. He writes something in, in chapter 1, verse 8. He says, if we or an angel from heaven should preach another gospel, let him be accursed. So do you think that it's possible that even an angel from heaven can preach another gospel? It absolutely is. See, what Paul, Paul's spirituality helped him to deal in spiritual realms where he could deal with angels. He understood this kind of thing. We think that everybody that comes to teach, and I'm not just talking about celestial beings. I'm talking about messengers as well. But this one very clearly uh, clarifies that he's talking about angels from heaven. But also messengers that preach another gospel. Why? Getting caught up in themselves. Anytime we overly concern ourselves with ourselves, we do something. We displace purpose with pride. Pride is the perversion of purpose. True purpose is to do what? Serve God. That's what true purpose is. But the devil will come in, the enemy will come in and distort what purpose is because pride only serves its own purpose. Pride only does what pride wants to do. Pride is an exuberant sense of self-importance. It's ostentatious, it's grandiose, it's presumptuous, it's narcissistic. Yeah. Pride is also vanity. And when you see puffed up in your scriptures, that's pride too. Puffed up. Yeah. It lurks. It lurks because it's sneaky. And it doesn't lurk where you think pride will lurk. Pride doesn't lurk only in dirty places. Now, it will find itself there. But pride likes to lurk in prestige. Pride likes to lurk in accomplishments. Won't pride get you an accomplishment? Pride will lurk in affiliations. Be careful who you connect it to. 
Because you might not have no pride in you until you got connected. Yeah. Yeah. Pride will also lurk in position. Pride does a whole lot of things, y'all. Pride will justify, excuse, and rationalize everything about itself. You can't tell a prideful person they wrong because they're going to find a way to make it right. Or they're going to do that thing that I say is a cowardice characteristic, they're going to deflect. They're not going to take self-assessment. They're not going to take self-inventory. All they're going to do is turn around and deflect. They're not going to take it upon themselves to be like, you know what that really is wrong with me? Because the first thing, and y'all know this, the first thing that you do when somebody tells you something is wrong with you is you think about what's wrong with them. I ain't got nobody who's honest in here. This ain't happening to none of y'all. Y'all ain't, ain't never had somebody tell you the truth about yourself, and you was like, well, you do so and so. You didn't take no inventory. You didn't look at, we didn't look at ourselves. We didn't look at ourselves automatic immediately. Our eyes became shut to the reflection and started deflecting back. Well, I see what's wrong with you. Why? That's what pride will do to you. I know you thought it was just a small thing. Uh-uh, baby, that's pride. That was pride. Pride did that. Pride did that. Say pride did that. Pride. Yeah, pride did that thing. Mm-hmm. Pride is the falsehood we deceive our own selves with. He says, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. It wasn't that you didn't have wisdom. It's not that you didn't have a spiritual, sensitive, a spiritual sensitivity. It's not that you did that. It's just that we corrupted it with our own stuff. Because again, here is Lucifer able to usher in the presence of God, and all of a sudden he starts being like, who they worshiping? Don't they understand I got this whole thing started? Ain't that how we act? Praise and worship leaders sometimes? Pastors sometimes? Huh? We think that we literally can open the doors of heaven. When I, y'all done seen some of these people post this stuff, I'd be like, y'all better be careful. When I sing the presence of the Lord, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, slow down, partner. When I sing the presence of the Lord fills the room, mm, I'm not doubting that. I'm just wondering where that's coming from. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm just wondering where that is coming from because you might just feel that might be pride creeping up because pride will lie dormant for years. Pride is malignant and pride will be right here. You'll be walking around just fine and all of a sudden that joker just flare up and act up. Y'all ever had one of them injuries that you thought was gone? And then you're like, oh, so, oh that's, that's when I had twisted my knee there one time. That's how pride will do you. Pride just hide and wait for you to be susceptible to something. Huh? Pride will wait until you're vulnerable and sneak right up in there. Puff yourself up. Yeah, that's why pride is, is a hard thing to get rid of. Because guess what? We actually want to feel good about that, what we do. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that when we overvalue it, is when we put it out of priority, is when we don't give credit to whom credit is due. You couldn't even get out your bed this morning, so what you going to talk about your accomplishments for? You didn't even get out of the bed this morning by yourself. Ain't nobody winning no awards around no country for you getting out of bed. Y'all ever seen a presentation? They just had the Oscars a couple weeks, like a week back, right? I guarantee you none of them Oscars was for the first one who got out of their bed this morning. Nobody's winning awards for that. Are they? Nope. Nobody's winning awards for that. Yet, you can't even, we can't even do that in and of our own self. Even in wickedness, God allowed you to rise mm. Even in wickedness, God allowed you to rise up. So how in the world did you get up, and now you done done some things, and now here it is, well, you know. I've, I've, you know, and then you do that false humility thing. Well, you know, we, 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 we do what we can when we can do it. And, oh, I, I, I ain't said nothing yet. You know you done said some stuff, preacher. Go ahead and preach. I, I ain't said nothing yet. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. You've been running your mouth for about 15 minutes now. Calm your nerves and preach. All right. <laughs> right? This is what it'll do to you. It'll hide it sneaky. 
It's sneaky. But it says, thou hast corrupt. Hold on. Thou. Thou has corrupted thy wisdom. You did. Say you did this. Do you hear that? You did this. Some of y'all will catch that. You did this. Mm-hmm. Pride will mess you up. Pride will tell you that you don't need no help. I don't need no help. I can do this. What? I can do this by myself. Pride will tell you that you're self-made. The most, most crazy thing I've ever heard in my life is a self-made millionaire. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't care if you was in a, in a, in a, in a building. I don't care if you was in a room all by yourself. No, matter of fact, not a room because that would have to, that would constitute somebody building the room. You was outside. <laughs> floating in the middle of the air. Because if you stand on the ground, somebody had to put the dirt there, the concrete there, something. You must have been up in the air floating. And you said, money cometh. And then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, your wallet was swollen with a million dollars. How you a self-made millionaire? You sold something, which means somebody had to purchase something from you. So that means that you did not make anything by yourself, including yourself. I did this all by myself. Hold on, wait a minute. I didn't know that you regulated your oxygen and your carbon dioxide. I didn't know that you did all that. That's, that's crazy. I've never seen it before. I didn't know that you could do that. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. You got yourself out of, this, out of bed this morning. You gave yourself that ingenious idea. There is no idea that did not come from God. Hmm? 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 All your inventions and stuff like that. I thought that up. No, you didn't. Who you think? Who you think you got creativity from? Oh, they ain't gonna like me for this one. Even your creativity to do wickedness, the creativity came from God, not the wickedness. The creativity came from God, which is why we are free will agents who are able to do wickedness. Why? Because we can create it in our when he made us in his image and his likeness, he gave us the power to create. But, but when he initially gave Adam his, his purpose, he said, be fruitful and multiply. But he did not want him to multiply himself. He wanted him to magnify God. Never mind. See, what we want to do is reproduce ourselves. I, I put a post out to the church. I was like, a lot of leaders want to duplicate themselves. I don't want to duplicate myself. I want to magnify God. Right. Amen? Y'all all right so far? So proud to have you singing songs all wrong. Proud to have you singing everything about you is right. Yeah, that's, how, that's what proud to do to you. Proud to really have you thinking that everything about you is right. Pride will mess you up. Pride will have you do something, and this is taught in the Bible. Pride will have you come out of debt by grace and demand recompense hmm, without mercy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There was a man in the Bible that said that he was in debt, and he came to his, 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 the person he was in debt to, and he's like, oh, forgive me. I'm in debt. I'm in debt. Forgive me. Don't be so hard to get me. And the man forgave him. He forgave him. He said he forgave him of his debt, not lessened it. I don't think that you heard me. I said he forgave him of his debt. That means that it's off the books. Anybody glad that God said all your faults, all your debts, all your sins, all your wickedness, all your waywardness, off the books. But the very same God who will wipe your record clean. And he'll do it for you. This is why he says, and I like the way that the King James Version puts it, forgive us our debts as we forgive our. But we don't like to forgive people that's in debt to us, do we? We like to hold them hostage. 
you owe me. You did somebody a favor, you owe me. Huh? You owe me. Let somebody owe you $5, you're going to haggle them down. You're going to follow them to Popeye's and follow them to McDonald's. I know you ain't finna get nothing off that dollar meal unless you pay me first. How you got a dollar and I ain't got five? Won't we do it? Because you want your stuff. You want your stuff. You don't want nobody to mess with your stuff. But we'll mess with other people's stuff. You don't want nobody to mess with your time. Let somebody be late to your appointment. You will lose your mind. Don't waste my time. Anybody ever said that? How many times, how many, how many people times we don't waste it? Oh, I did the best that I could. No, you didn't. The best that you could would have been there to be 15 minutes early. That's the best you could have done. You knew the best you did. You did what you, what you felt was necessary. You, you got there when you, when you could. <laughs> you got there when you, never mind. You got there when you could. Not when you could have, but when you could. Get this, in the covering cherub, oh, my hierarchy people, in the covering cherub, iniquity was found in thee. He said, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Isaiah 12 and 13 says, for thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. This is what he gets in his head. I'm going to send to heaven. I'm going to be above the stars of God because of my beauty. You ever seen somebody who's so fine that they literally think that their stuff don't stink? I mean, for real. They, so, they just look so good. Got it going on. Understand what I'm saying? Just think that they can talk to people any old kind of way because you look good. But you toe up on the inside. Before pride, I want to get to this point here. Before pride, the devil had purpose. Now he got pride. Consumed him. Pride has consumed him. Pride consumed him, which is why he looks for whom he can devour. Whatever you become intimate with, you will reproduce. Whatever you become intimate with, you will reproduce. So because pride consumed him, now he walks around the rest. His whole thing now is consuming other people. He don't, that's all he can do is to consume somebody else. Why? Because that's what pride did to him. Pride ate him up, and now he's trying to eat up everything that he can, as long as he can. And he greedy, too. Mm. Here's the thing about how we can see the difference, the contrast between how God operates and how the enemy operates because both of them want you. Or both of them want something out of you. Amen? Both of them want something out of you, but there's a thing that God does. God will adopt you. Right? He will adopt you. The devil will abduct you. I don't think they should see one's a, see one's legal and one's illegal. Cause that's how, <laughs> one's legal and one's e see you can take a child that's not yours and it be lawful. Never mind. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I said you can take a child that is not yours by birth or by blood legally. It's called adoption. We have received the spirit whereby we can do what? Cry. It is the spirit of adoption. But what the devil, what the enemy operates in is the spirit of abduction because the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So what he does is he wants you to steal, he wants to steal you for a little bit. He wants to steal your purpose so that it becomes his. And what he would do is pervert your purpose with pride so that you start serving your own interest which are really serving his interests. We cannot serve our own interests. Amen? 
if God gave you a business, your business is not your own. If God gave you a book, that book is not your own. You don't, you don't own any part of that. Huh? When, 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 you sign, when, when we come into agreement with God, we literally give it all to him. What you going to hold back from God? Some of us holding back praise. Some of us will hold back worship. Some, back, some of us will hold back our time. I ain't had time to read. Hmm, really? So who you gave that time to? You know, that's how affairs start. Because at first you just give them a little bit of your time, right? First you just give them a little bit of your time, right? It's just friendly. It's just friendly. We just, we just friends. We just good friends. Just good friends. Hey. Uh, hey. Hey. Just give me 30 minutes. Just give me an hour. Just give me an afternoon. Just give me a week. I tell you what, you ain't got to pay for nothing. I'm going to take you out on a vacation. Hold up. Wait a minute. Ain't name rang nowhere. You finna go to a foreign, so you finna leave your territory. The place where you got good footing. Because it's free now. Ain't nothing free, by the way. It's free now. It's free now. You ain't got to play nothing. You done told all the whole church that you done got a blessing. I always wanted to see the world. Yeah, you about to. More intimately than you ever thought. And now you have left, we have left our territory where we have good foot now into an unknown place and then think that we, we got the audacity to think that we can keep ourselves. Huh? You think that you can keep yourself? Oh, yeah, I can control myself. Everybody, everybody has a moment of weakness. Everybody has a moment of weakness, and you don't have to be on no kind of drug to be seduced. You don't have to be on no kind of intoxicant to be seduced because you really want to please you. Mm -hmm. And you will learn how to, unfortunately, please yourself. Hmm. Am I talking to some grown folk? You will learn how to please yourself. So instead of serving the master, you start master um, baiting. Mm. You start master baiting. You're trying to bait another master. No, you're trying to bait another master. What you're doing is baiting another master, and the other master will take the bait. I know, I know it's Sabbath morning. I, I know we're in front of some church people, but you do need to be afraid to touch yourself. Because once you pop, you just can't. Mm. Once you understand that you can do it yourself, never mind. See, I ain't talking to no grown folks up in here. I'm talking to some scary folk that don't live for real. You know what I'm saying? Am I talking to some real folk that done done some real stuff? I ain't saying that you're proud of it, but you done done some real stuff. Some stuff that you ain't proud of. You was lonely. You felt vulnerable. Wasn't no man around. Wasn't no woman around. Wasn't nobody around. You were by yourself. And you can find nobody else to please you. So you did it yourself. And now you can't even get in a relationship with nobody else because you love yourself too much. He don't know how to touch me. She don't know how to touch me. Why are married folks still going in the bathroom? Why married folks still got stuff that plug in and jiggle? 
I'm sorry. Let me get back to the message before I mess up the church. Huh? Because you're going to make sure that you get off. Am I talking to anybody? It's uncomfortable. It makes you squirm in your seat. It makes you be like, I can't believe that he's talking about that. But if we don't deal with you, we can't get rid of you. What you think the devil was doing? The devil started feeling himself. Because, see, y'all thinking only about the nasty that's in the natural. See, it's some nasty spiritual stuff that you can do, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can start feeling yourself in the spirit. Uh-huh, feeling yourself. You know what I'm saying? You start preaching. Ooh, they saying amen to me. That's what the devil was doing. Ooh, when I tell them to lift their hands, they lifting their hands. I like the way that feel. Oh, when I pray, the doors of heaven open up. And then we be, we be in church. Y'all got to help my mind today. Y'all be in church having spiritual illegal orgasms. So, so, oh, God. Oh. What God, what God you hollering at, baby? Which, which one you hollering at? Why, why, why you acting like that? I, I, I don't understand that one. I, I'm not, I'm not I'm, I ain't feeling that. I ain't, no. Hmm? I'm going to get off that one. I see his song. I can't believe that he just said that. Yeah, that's, what, that's what's going on, though. If we don't deal with you, we can't get rid of you. Anybody want to get rid of you? Check this out. Check this out. To be accurate, to be accurate, I can't fully subscribe to falling in love. I, to be accurate, I cannot subscribe to falling in love. In love, we rise. He got up. Why you falling? I keep on falling, 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 falling. I keep on falling, 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 falling. falling. Hold on. If God is love, since God is love, what did he do in love? He got up. In love, we rise. In love, we don't fall. We've been teaching it the wrong way. I don't never want you to fall in love ever, ever, ever again. Rise to the occasion. When the marriage is sealed, when the marriage is sealed, they have the whole congregation get up. And they say, they say for the first time ever, anywhere, presenting to you. It's become so registered. It's become so registered. They ain't even got to tell you to get up no more. You get up because you know it's the right thing to do. Here she come. Here they come. Am I talking to anybody? Ooh. Somebody saying in love, we rise. Understand this. Understand this. Position misappropriation is poisonous. Position misappropriation is poisonous. Position can poison if we pollute our station with arrogance. The Bible tells us that God set Lucifer in this place. He set Lucifer in this place, but the station where Lucifer at was at, he lost track of what he was doing. He lost track of whom he was serving, and again, he started feeling himself. So he got out of position. Because of the position that he was put in. Mm -hmm. We say that spiritual wickedness is in high places, right? Mm -hmm. Well, spiritual wickedness was impregnated, carried, and birthed in the high place. I said it was impregnated, 
it was carried and it was birthed in a high place. Satan didn't, Satan didn't commit sin on earth. Satan was in heaven. Satan was in, Lucifer was in heaven when he was impregnated with pride. And then he carried pride. Because don't think it was a one-day decision now. Nah. He was carrying this thing for a while. Maybe around about nine months. I don't know. But he was carrying it for a little while. And then that baby started kicking because the baby wanted to get out. Because the baby wants a life of his... Man, I'm, t I I'm trying to tell you. I said the baby wants a life of his own. The baby wants a life of his own. And after a while, what happened with those, those children, you can raise them for a little bit of time under your mantle, under your rules. But then they want to do their own thing. And so now your children, are out of your children are out of control. Your children are out of control. Some of us got spiritual bastards that's just out of control. Don't know, we don't know who the father is. I know I'm talking hard today. Y'all got to just work with me. But you got, you got stuff that's around you that you done loved up on, you done raised up, you done fed, you done nurtured. It's been on your breast. You done bought it a bottle. You've been raising it. Now you in love. You in love with your own iniquity. In love with your own wreckedness. Because anything that you carry and you birth, you become attached to it. It's only natural. And now you hold them little snotty nose jokers' hands. They don't know how to act in the store. Y'all ever been somewhere and you just start acting up and you didn't know what happened? That was them bastards. I'm sorry, I got to say it how it is. I ain't apologizing not at any time. That's them bastards. Acting up like that. Why? Why? They ain't got no training. Look who their daddy was. They just acting like their daddy. Their daddy was a rebel. What did you expect? But it was only five minutes at first. It was. It was only five minutes. Because you know some of them. <laughs> hold up. One more real moment. Y'all all right? Yeah. You know some of these people that we done laid with. At first, we weren't going to give them no time of the day, was we? Never mind, y'all ain't never, that ain't, you ain't paying any attention to him until you got into the wrong position. You was like, I didn't, you woke up that, hmm, you woke up that morning like, I don't even know how I got here. Because I know myself far too well to have ended up here with this joker. But the deed has already been done. But aren't you glad that you serve a God who can wipe the record clean? Aren't you glad that you serve a God? Ooh, 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 my, oh, Lord. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. Aren't you glad that you serve a God who ain't scared to kill everything? That means I will take out the whole family if it's going to mess up my kingdom. I don't think that you understand me. When I said kill them all, I meant the babies too. Because if you don't kill them, they're just going to raise up another generation. Talking about some generational curses that you created. You allowed them jokers to generate and regenerate and regenerate and regenerate and regenerate. And now instead of killing off the one that you should have killed a long time ago, you fighting a thousand. Now, I know one could put a thousand to flight, but you created a thousand. Now, I serve the God of war, you understand? The Lord is a man of war. That's what the Bible teaches us, right? He teaches my hands to war, so he understands war. He ain't afraid of war. But God is too wise. God is too wise instead of him be like, all right, you go create a war now with yourself. Go fight yourself now. The enemy don't attack you enough. Do you really want to deal with you? Do you really want, do you think that you can handle yourself? Nah, did you hear me? I said, do you really think that you can handle yourself? You can't. You can't even beat you.
You know, a lot of people say that my biggest enemy is me. I like the way Anna Menio put it in, even I can't stop me. Not when I'm in Christ. Not when I'm in Christ. Amen? Mm-hmm. So position can, position can poison. It can poison. Side note, y'all all right? Side note, your station is not a license to Lord. I'll explain. Your station is not a license to Lord. First Peter 5, 3 says, don't Lord over those assigned to you. They are God's heritage. Don't Lord over those assigned to you. What it means is that sometimes we get put in position, and instead of being a leader, we want to become a Lord. God made you a leader. He did not make you Lord. There is only one Lord. And what we'll do is we'll start lording over people because we pollute our position with arrogance. And we start thinking that those people assigned to us belong to us. Whoever is assigned to you does not belong to you. Let me say that again. Whoever is assigned to you does not belong to you. Sometimes we think that the people that are assigned to us belong to us so that we can give them what they are supposed to do instead of asking God. This is how many leaders get messed up because they start telling people who are assigned to them what their purpose is. I can only confirm your purpose. I can't give it to you. I can only confirm your purpose. As your pastor, I can only confirm your purpose. I cannot. The biggest mistake you can ever do is try to tell somebody their purpose. You can confirm it. Don't you give it to them. Because now you have been the one. Now, they, now you are responsible for it. You understand that? When God gives you a purpose, he's responsible for it. And God ain't never failed. But if I give you a purpose, I'm going to fail you. I'm telling you that right now. Somewhere along the road, it ain't my intention, but I ain't perfect. Now, that's not an escape clause for me. That's not an escape clause, but understand that that's what it is. Some, some leaders use their humanity as an escape clause. No, I'm still responsible. But in my responsibility, I must teach, and I must also exemplify that which I teach. Hmm. When God give you something, he said, look, when I, if I give you joy, the enemy can't even take that. Whatever God gives you can't be taken. If I give you something, it can be snatched up. You understand me? But whatever God gives you can't be taken from you. I just want to move on. Position can poison. <laughs> Position can poison if we pollute our relationships with arrogance. Can I talk about a couple of relationships? Don't you forget, Miriam and Aaron, that though you see visions, you ain't got the kind of same relationship that Moses has, which is a direct one. Don't, 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 don't think because you're in the hierarchy of the church of Israel. <laughs> you know, y'all, you come in praising and you can prophesy and you can shake your tambourine and you can dance like nobody. Miriam was a dancer, y'all. You understand what I'm saying? She could... She had dreams, prophetic dreams, accurate, but she didn't have the same relationship that Moses had. And what happens is when we get in position, even if we ain't the top person, we'll start coming for that number one spot. Sometimes God meant for you to be number two. Hmm? Because you are supporting the kingdom. He's number one anyway, so ain't nobody really number one but him. Amen? But sometimes God did not set you in a position where you was going to lead a church. Some of us can't even lead our own lives. Some of us, you're going to lead a church. Your finances in a wreck. Your house in a wreck. You don't invite nobody to the house because your house nasty. Don't nobody want to come in there. But when you come here, you shop. Pressed. Dressed to impress. Looking in the mirror. Wait till I learn how to walk. Y'all will catch that. 
but don't get in a relationship. I know that Moses is your brother. I know he's your brother. But 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 his 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 being a shepherd of the flock is over your bloodline. I said his position in God is higher than your bloodline, so that's not your brother. That ain't your brother no more. Mm -mm. That's the Lord's vessel. Mm. You ain't my auntie no. Oh, y'all don't like this here. You ain't you don't like this. You ain't my auntie no more. You uh, see 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 where see if I treat her like my auntie, I'm gonna mess up. See if I treat him like my cousin, I'm gonna mess up. If I treat her like my sister-in-law, I'm gonna mess up. But if I treat her like an evangelist, perhaps I'll act right. If I treat her like a sister in the Lord, I will act right. I'll behave myself accordingly. If I understand that this is a minstrel of the Lord, maybe I act a little bit different. But because that's my cousin, now we think that we can get, oh my God, we think that we can get away with anything. Huh? Why? Priorities out of order. If you say that you assign to somebody, man, you better be sure. Do you, do you know your assignment? Do you know your purpose? My God, you better ask God. Mm, for real. Don't forget that the servant is not greater than his master. Don't forget that though we call him friend, he is still master. I've taught this many a times before that the disciples got so used to being around Jesus, they forgot to do custom merry things. Stuff that was custom. Eh, we talk about the, the feet washing and everything. And I ain't even talking about that. There's a custom in Israel, old custom, an ancient custom. It risen that every time somebody hit the door of your home, you were to anoint them. Every time that they hit the doors of your house, you were to anoint them. And what the disciples did was they would forget. Dude, they just walk in the house like, whatever. Oh, that's just Jesus. Oh my God, that's just, that's just, that's just Jesus, the car, Joseph, son, the carpenter, little Jesus, I used to run around here and mess with all the Pharisees and the Sadducees, little Jesus, used to get on everybody's nerve asking all them questions, little Jesus, who do you think he is? People will, what I like to call little boy you when you grown. People that know you since you were long, young, they'll still talk to you like you're a little girl, won't they? I just want to talk to some real folk. I see some seasoned folk up in the audience. Some people that know you long enough will still talk to you like, like, like you're like you 10 years old. you be like, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. How you going to talk to me like, like you crazy or something? I ain't your child. We grew up together. You don't understand where I'm at. I told you in the last sermon that just because somebody's been intimate with you doesn't mean that they understand your purpose. It don't even mean that you were supposed to be with that person. I told you, and I'm going to stick with it. I'm telling you, Joe's wife had to die. She didn't understand who Joe really was. That's why she had to go. She had to go. She, want, she didn't know. She, he, what, what I said last week, she started talking foolish. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. We don't talk foolish. We talk Hebrew. How did you get that other language? Who you been sleeping with? How did you, because you don't learn a language like that unless the Holy Ghost hits you now. <laughs> but there's other ways of learning. You know, if the, if the Holy Ghost can give you another language, um, mm, yeah, there's another ghost that can too. Anyway, and it ain't Casper. Again, relationship is not a license for encroachment. Don't get out of bounds, people. Don't get out of bounds just because you're in a relationship with somebody or you're in a relationship with Moses, you're in a relationship with, uh, with Christ. Don't get out of bounds and forget that he is the master. Don't get out of bounds with your pastor, whoever your pastor is. Don't get out of bounds with your own spouse. Again, there's certain things that you just can't. Again, I use this scenario. Again, you can't do certain things with your wife men at certain times of the month. I don't care if it's your right to. I know her body ain't hers. I know your body ain't yours. 
yours. But there are some times where you cannot do even what you have a right to do. Why? It ain't the time. That's out of bounds. Now, that's just not only with intimates, but sometimes, again, people just be in the wrong mood. If you know somebody, why are you going to mess with them? You saw it on their face when they in the door. He go, pokey, proudy, doing all this, doing all that. Yeah, what you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? Pow! I And then you know what you're going to do? Being the hurt one? This is the question that you're going to ask. What got into you? The question I want to ask back to you is what got into you? Don't you provoke somebody and then blame them for the reaction. I know nobody want to hear that. Don't you provoke somebody and then be mad about the reaction. You keep pushing a grown man enough time, ladies. I love, I don't believe in striking no woman. I don't believe in striking no woman. I don't believe in striking no woman. I do not condone it. But if you push somebody at the wrong time and it's just a reflex, it still ain't legal. It ain't right. And I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying, don't get, don't be sitting there like, what happened? You've been egging him on for two hours. He sat for two hours and listened to you yapping. And it's not just, this is just not with women. I'm not just picking on women, provoking, because we provoke stuff too, man. She working around the house. She doing everything in the house. Everything. She take care of the children. She take care of the house. The house don't get clean unless she home. She's sick. She out there. She can't even get, baby, you going to cook. Hey, baby, I can't get none. And then you wonder why she got an attitude with you. Go on somewhere, I got a headache. Yeah, you aching my head with your stuff. Don't provoke somebody and then be talking about surprised at the reaction. Does that make sense? I'm almost out your way. Hmm. When did we, when did we, the messengers become the message. When did prayer, praise, and worship, whatever you want to call it, start becoming about us? You hear more about a person from the pulpit than you hear them talk, even if you have a conversation with them. They want to tell you what they drive. They want to tell you what they got on. They're going to walk a certain way. I got on these nine lady gators. I am now. Sometimes I wear them later. <laughs> mm, wait till I sing. Wait till I sing. Oh, they did. Oh, praise and worship was all right, but wait till I sing. Wait till I get up there. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a set. I'm a set the atmosphere. What? What? Yeah, you might set something. You might set something. I'm a set. I'm gonna set the atmosphere. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna have a move of God on tonight. Why? Cause you showed up. Oh, I'm sorry. Cause God only moves when you're around. The guy who's everywhere, all at the same time, can't move unless you're there. Hmm. That's something. That's something. You awfully powerful. <laughs> you awfully powerful. He could be everywhere at the same time, but he don't move until you step there. They be announcing, I'm coming to your city and God's coming with me. Y'all was in they city before you got there. And when you leave, he's still going to be there. I'm not talking about folk that are dedicated and that are a true vessel. I'm just talking about people that have pulled this stuff. Why? Because you can get somebody excited? Hmm? Because you can make their they, they, they blood pressure wide, rise. You can make the hair on their neck stand up. Hit the right chord, that'll happen. I ain't even got to say nothing. Hit the right chord, that'll happen. Say the right word. Say what's hot right now. 
Say the new hot thing, whatever the new hot thing in church is. Because, you know, we got fast in church just like we got fast in the world. Hmm? Hmm? Because hooping been, what? Hooping been in style for years. And you get around, like, I mean, you know, I mean, for me, sometimes not a hooping is like bell bottoms. I'm like, why are you still doing that? Y'all don't want to hear me. Y'all don't want to hear me. I'm not saying it ain't right in, the, in some places, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, that ain't even you. Now you trying to do it because... Uh, because cause somebody else did it, and that, ain't, that really ain't even you. And now you're putting on. That's when you're putting on. Dog on spiritual Pinocchios. You silly. Listen, listen. Listen. Everything ain't about you. Everything about you. The world was not created, ladies and gentlemen. The world was not created to do your will. The world was not created to do your will. The world was not created to feed your ego. And that's what we want sometimes. We just want somebody to feed our ego. That's why people be doing that false humility thing. Feed my ego. That's why people do that, that, uh, that counterfeit uh, uh, servanthood. They just serve so everybody can see them serve. Oh, look at me serving. Look at me serving. Look at me serving. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. This is Martha. Hey, Jesus. Don't you see me over here serving? Tell my sister I'm over here serving, Jesus. Make my sister help me. Stop doing the kingdom thing. Help me. Here it is, Jesus on his way to the, most, to, the, to the most powerful thing that he ever did, which was to get on the cross and get up from it. He's on his way. And his friend. And his friend. You can't do that. Hold on. Wait a minute. You're telling me what I can't do. You ever been on your way to purpose and somebody tried to stop you? Because they love you. Oh, no, I didn't think that you heard me. I said they trying to stop you because they love you so much. Don't go too fast. Hold on. Wait a minute. Are you sure? I wouldn't be going if I wasn't. But you ain't never been there before. Abraham hadn't been the way he had been. Well, tell me all the details. I don't know all the details. Anybody got that kind of faith where you don't need all the details? True faith is not having all the details. You just know the end. It's going to work out for your good. I don't have to have all the details. I just know the end is going to work out for my good. If you say, send me, I'll go, that means that you don't need no details. You just find God say, don't even take a script with you. Don't take nothing with you. Just go, just go ahead, start walking. When you, when you get in the right area, I'll be like, stop right there. That's good. That's good. That's the kind of faith that we need, a faith that is absent of ourselves, a faith that doesn't include you. In this context, I'm talking to you to get rid of you. I'm talking to you to get rid of you. We have the question, what about me? Well, what about you? Why don't they see me working? Huh? Why don't they see my ability? Why don't they see it my way? What's going to happen? When is going to happen for me? Anybody say that one? When is it going to happen for me? Why don't they see me? Don't nobody see me? Mm. Nobody ever looking for God. Nobody ever looking for God should find me or you. They have to come to you because you have the body. But our true transparency is meaning that they see beyond you and see who you serve. So in fact and in truth, they are not coming to you. They are coming to the light. Which is why you don't put your light under a bowl. But you let your light so shine before men so that they will see that your good works. They will see your good works, but they will glorify your father, which is in heaven. Is that not what the text says? 
God exalts the truly humble. You ain't got to worry about exalting yourself. God will do it for you. You ain't got to do it yourself. He shows the humble favor. James 4 and 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. So you don't have to lift up yourself, ladies and gentlemen. You ain't got to puff up yourself. You ain't got to be all vain and stuff. You ain't got to do that. He'll do it. Let us not let our business become the focus above purpose. It doesn't matter whether it's our gifting, our office, our station, our anointing. doesn't matter. This is not about us to the degree where we start supplanting kingdom purpose with our own agenda. Our purpose is to support the kingdom. We all play an integral part in that. Y'all believe that? We all play an integral part of that. But the only way that you're going to seal up those leaky places is to get rid of you. Because the weakness is in thinking that we can do anything ourselves. That's our big, biggest weakness. When you think that you can do anything on your own, the enemy don't have to come and mess with you. You be messing with you. Excusing all the stuff that you do. Excusing all the stuff that I do. Well, you know, this is one thing that pride do to you. I'm almost out your way, I promise. Pride will have you excuse some stuff on it. Well, you know, I only been saved for five years. Proud to have you excuse some stuff on it. Oh, see, you've been saved for 10 years, so you should know better. Proud to have you excuse some stuff. Proud to have you be like, oh, it's just a little white lie. Proud to have you be like, I'm not going to do it after this time. Proud would do that. I know that you thought it was just a little thing. Proud to be like, I'm going to get saved when I'm 30. Proud to do that to you. I'm going to get saved when I'm 50. Keep putting it off, putting it off because you don't think this whole time that you don't been keeping yourself. Well, if I don't made it this far, maybe I'll make it a little bit further. If I don't made it this far, maybe I'll make it a little bit further. If I don't made it this far, up, oh, wait a minute, time's up. Don't get stuck out there by yourself. Because we can't do anything by ourselves. Everything is not about you. Everything should be, because it's not always, but everything should be about him. How do I serve you? Even Christ had to check himself. We talk about it so many times. At Gethsemane, he says, nevertheless, that means for a minute, Jesus was thinking about himself and what he wanted to do. So there was a point in time, our Savior, perfect, was selfish. So we begin this message talking about being selfish and what selfishness does to you. Selfishness will have you put relationships out of order because you start focusing on yourself, whether it be spiritual or natural. Selfishness will have you consider what's best for you. But purpose, true purpose, will have you drop everything and say, I'll lay down my life. Do you understand that when you say those words, how heavy that is? I give my life to you. Nevertheless, not my will, not what I want to do, not what I think is best for me, but what you want. Your will be done, not mine. This kingdom ain't about you. It involves you, but it's not about you. You understand that? It involves you because, again, you carry the spirit of purpose in you. But your purpose is even bigger than you. Your destiny is bigger than you. Amen? Give God glory all over this place.